Hello, my name is Matthew Penning, and in this lecture snippet, I'm going to go ahead and install the Windows Server 2012 operating system onto my computer. Now, what you just saw was the boot up screen saying to press any key in order to boot from the disk itself. And so I've gone ahead and done that. Now, if you place a disk, the installation disk, into your computer, and you did not see that, more than likely you may have to change some settings in your BIOS, or you may have to find the key on your keyboard to select which option to boot from. So I'm booting from the disk and it's going to load up and I'm going to go through the process. Now there already is an existing operating system on here so we're going to delete a couple of the partitions as we go along and set this operating system up. So to begin with I'm going to go ahead and leave it as English. I'll just go ahead and hit next and I'm going to choose to install now. Okay I'm presented with a couple different options for what I want to install for the server operating system and there are a couple things to look at. First of all, I need to decide whether I want to do command line only or if I want to have the graphical interface which is where the desktop and the start menu and everything is. And so you'll see one option is server core and the other is with the GUI which is the graphical user interface that most of us are used to with the Windows operating system. There is another option here that's between standard and data center. If you're planning on using this computer to run domain or run as a file server, more than likely you're probably going to want to choose the standard option. The data center option allows for more virtual machines to be installed within this computer. So if you plan on using this to deploy a lot of computers through virtual machines, then you may want to look at the data center option. But for this video, I'm going to choose to use the standard with GUI. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Okay, I need to accept the license agreement, and I'll go ahead and hit next. And here are the two options. Now, nine times out of ten, I'm going to choose the custom install. But if you had a previous, older server, and you wanted to upgrade it, well, then you would choose the upgrade option. Now, I'm not going to choose that option, and I typically do not like to upgrade old servers. I like to start with a fresh install. So I'm going to choose this custom install Windows only option. And now because I had a previous operating system, I'm going to see that my drive 0, which is our first hard drive, is partitioned in two sections, partition 1 and partition 2. And what I need to do is delete these. I do not want to use anything left over. I'm just going to go ahead and remove those. And this is going to go ahead and remove the setup from the previous operating system and leave me with just unallocated space. Now if this was a brand new hard drive I was installing on, it would look like this right here where it was just all unallocated space. And I'm going to let Windows go ahead and do the partitioning on this setup. So I'm just going to go ahead and simply say next. Alright, and now it's going to go through the process of copying the files, installing everything, and it's going to end up doing a reboot. So I'm going to let this run through, I'll pause the video, and then on the reboot I'll go ahead and continue the video. Okay, after a few minutes, you'll see that the Windows has finished the first part of the setup and it's going to go ahead and restart itself automatically. So we'll let it do that. On the restart, you do not want to press a key here, which you see at this moment. You want to let it run through and do the setup process. Otherwise, you'd have to go through the whole setup again. And now it's going to go through the process of getting everything set up. And as you can see, it looks like it's doing another reset. So I'm going to again let it just run through the process. All right, now that the installation has taken me to this screen, I can go ahead and set a password for the administrative user. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. I will tell you that you need to abide by the restrictions they have for the password which means that you have to have at least three of the four different types of things in your password, an uppercase, lowercase, a symbol, or a number, and it also has to be at least eight characters long. So we're going to want to make sure we have a password that meets those criteria. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got that typed in. And just so you can see what I'm currently using for this, it's just a simple password with the at symbol, and that meets three of them with a capital P, the symbol for the at, and then the S for a lowercase, and then it's eight characters long. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish. 
All right, now I've been brought to the login screen. So all I need to do now is just go ahead and do control alt delete and then log in with my password and the installation is now finished. If you want to find out more about Server 2012, visit my blog at LectureStempest.com where I'll have plenty more videos about setting this up as a domain controller and a lot of the different roles and features that are available here within this operating system.